You know, it was Sir Winston Churchill who said, I am a man of simple tastes. I am very easily satisfied with the very best. Yes, today we're taking a look at the Carl Zeiss 25mm f2 Batis lens. This lens is exclusively available for the Sony E-mount system. And indeed, these lenses have undoubtedly sold a lot of Sony E-mount cameras. That's because these are, if not the first, certainly among the first, lenses from Zeiss that will autofocus. For many, many years, Carl Zeiss lenses have been renowned as among the best in the camera industry. They are known for superior optics. And so when Zeiss announced a new line of lenses called Battis for the Sony E-mount system, many photographers switched to Sony specifically to shoot these lenses. Alas, many were immediately disappointed because they couldn't even find these lenses to purchase. The Battis line have been such hot sellers that they've been out of stock at dealerships around the world. And only recently has Zeiss managed to increase production and thus open up these lenses to more purchasers, including yours truly. I was immediately disappointed unboxing this lens when I discovered that Zeiss does not include a case. But fear not, I found a nice case for the Battis 25 F2. If you want to see the case that I purchased, click the link in the YouTube description for this video or go to the companion review here on YouTube where I will show you in detail the case that I purchased for my Battis 25 F2. So let's step in and take a look at the build quality and construction of the Battis first. As you can see, uh, these lenses have a very unique look. They're constructed of metal, that's aluminum, also known as aluminum, and what Zeiss calls high quality plastics. Lens hood is plastic. The lens cap, just pretty much your basic plasticky clip on lens cap. And also the curious choice of a rubber focusing ring. I'm not too sure about the rubber because frankly it will attract a bit of dust and fine hairs and dirt and debris. This lens has 67 millimeter front filter threads and if you take a look at the front of the lens you will see that the front element is rather bulbous and exposed so I think it's a wise practice to have a UV filter on it in most situations. Now of course if you're out shooting landscape somewhere and you're not worried about rocks flying up and striking the front element of your lens then maybe you'll take that UV filter off for maximum sharpness. This lens is made in Japan, but supposedly it is made under the strict supervision of Zeiss technicians. Sony has really had nothing to do with the design or the production of the lens. And when the day comes that the lens needs servicing, it will go to Zeiss. For you Zeiss fanatics out there, this lens features a Distagon design with 10 elements and eight groups. Another really unique design characteristic of this lens, if I switch it into manual focus mode, you can see there is a, a really cool LED display. Some people have derided this as a gimmick. I really don't think it's a gimmick because if you're using some of these wider angle lenses for astrophotography, it's gonna be really useful to have a backlit display. And if you wanna to focus to infinity, boom. You found your affinity focus. No more fumbling around in the dark. If you want some indication that this is a serious lens, look no further than the weather ceiling inside. Yes, that is not simply a decorative blue band lining the lens mount. It's weather ceiling. Now the lens hood, again, is made of high quality plastic and it is of the pedal type. But when you attach the lens hood to the lens, uh, it really makes for a uh, striking presentation. This is a lens you could spot from 100 yards away and immediately identify as a baddest lens. So clearly Zeiss is making a statement with the design of these lenses. You know, when you look at this lens, it's really kind of a chunky monkey. It uh, is rather bulbous on the end of this Sony a7 II. 
yet it handles very well. Part of that is the length. It's short and fat. That's what she said. And, but it handles surprisingly well. You know, if you glance at this lens, you might think that it weighs a pound. It does not. It only weighs 335 grams or 11.8 ounces. So it's much lighter in weight than it looks at first glance. Zeiss has clearly managed some weight savings through the choice of materials. So with this lens, you get a wide angle, 25 millimeters field of view, which on an APS-C sensor camera, like an Alpha 6000 or an Alpha 6300, would translate to around 36, 37 millimeters, uh, which is a very nice walkabout focal length. So I think the lens actually plays well on both full frame and APS-C cameras. So why do people fork out the cash for Zeiss lenses? The optics are simply superior. Is the lens sharp? Hell yes, this lens is sharp. The lens is sharp wide open at f2, and it does get sharper as you stop it down. It's sharp enough for Gillette and Bic, okay? It's plenty sharp. It's not only sharp in the center, it's sharp to the edge of the frame. You're paying for that edge to edge, corner to corner sharpness and you will get it with this lens. But really the qualities of a Zeiss lens go beyond mere sharpness. When you purchase a Zeiss lens, you're also purchasing color. You're purchasing bokeh. You're purchasing micro contrast. You're purchasing magic dust that is somehow sprinkled within. And some people will claim that Zeiss images have a special 3D pop. I've said before that Carl Zeiss lenses carry with them a certain je ne sais quoi. If you look to the literal translation of je ne sais quoi, it's French for I don't know what. And I think that's actually a fairly accurate description of what goes on when you take photographs with a Zeiss lens. If you are a believer in the magic dust that gets sprinkled inside these Zeiss lenses, then you're going to find the output of these lenses is very pleasing. I think the 25 millimeter focal length is a very useful walkabout focal length. It's wide, it's great for landscape, it's great for street photography. And another thing I really appreciate about this lens is the close minimum focusing distance. The minimum focusing distance of this lens is 7.87 inches, something like that. So you can get up really close to your subject and get some fairly unique shots. And so that's another aspect of this lens that makes it, to me, a great walkabout type of lens. It's the type of lens you can attach to your camera and take just about anywhere. Due to the fast F2 aperture, you can take it indoors. It's great at night. It's great in low light. Look, at the end of the day, it's a Zeiss. You're gonna pay a premium price to get that little blue badge on the side of your lens, but you're gonna get some wonderful tangible and intangible benefits. You're gonna get sharpness, you're gonna get color, you're gonna get bokeh, you're gonna get micro contrast. So this is a lens that really delivers it all. Outstanding optics and image quality, simply a very special lens. So there's not really much to complain about with this lens, except of course, the price. But as I've said previously, if you want a real Zeiss, you're going to pay the price. If you're wanting to build a kit of prime lenses, this absolutely deserves your consideration. If you're new here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll be reviewing more Sony E-mount lenses in the near future. Until next time, as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Lolo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.